This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, and horror film called The Twilight Zone Replay. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. At the Busy Bee Diner, Nina and her son Dorian have lunch on their way to his college. Curious, Dorian asks his mother who took her on her first day of college, but Nina claims that she drove herself, proud of being independent. Nina then brings out her camcorder, and Dorian complains about her using such an old thing. Nina argues that Dorian will be a filmmaker, so he must respect the classic. She adds that the camcorder recorded his first baby steps and will now record his first steps into college. While they talk, Officer Lasky walks in to have lunch at the bar. Nina playfully videotapes her son, asking how it feels to go to college and leave his mom alone. Dorian asks if that's what her father asked her when she went to college, but Nina reminds him that he already knows the answer. Still, Dorian argues that his uncle Neil said his grandfather was proud of Nina, having contacted him via Facebook. Nina, however, doesn't believe this because her father never helped her. To lighten the mood, Nina insists that she cares about her son, and when he has his child, he'll show the videos to his future daughter, whom Nina already named Trinity. Dorian laughs at the name, so Nina continues her mock interview, calling her son the next Ryan Coogler. Dorian questions how she knows Ryan Coogler, so she points out that she also watched Black Panther. Dorian returns his focus to lunch, but when he squirts ketchup on his fries, he gets some on his shirt. He complains that his mother recorded him getting ketchup on his shirt, so he asks her to rewind the tape and check it. To appease him, Nina rewinds the tape, and suddenly, everything else rewinds before her eyes. When Nina recovers, Dorian questions how she knows Ryan Coogler again, but his shirt is clean again. He then gets the ketchup, but she stops him from squeezing the bottle. She points out that he already did that and got ketchup on his shirt, but Dorian shakes his head. Nina tries to convince herself that it was just deja vu. Later, Dorian takes the wheel as they continue their trip. Nina asks him to keep the radio on the news, but he thinks it's boring, so he switches it to a station that plays hip-hop music. Nina jokes that she wins all her cases in court but loses when it comes to Dorian. Dorian reasons that it's because she loves him so much. The navigation app then advises Dorian to take the next turn, catching Nina's attention. Dorian admits that he reprogrammed the app to take them to his uncle's house, but Nina refuses to go there. Dorian ends up missing the turn, and Nina tells him to slow down. Ignoring her advice, Dorian rants that he hasn't seen his uncle for years, but she advises him not to look back and just focus on his future. To tease her, Dorian takes her camcorder despite her protest that it isn't safe. He pretends to interview her about how not meeting his family might have affected him growing up, but the mood changes when a police officer's siren comes from behind them. Dorian begrudgingly pulls over while Nina reminds him to be respectful. Soon, Lasky knocks on the driver's window, greeting the two. Nina casually shares that they're heading to Dorian's college, but he calls the school the Black School. The comment pisses Dorian off, but Nina just politely nods. Lasky asks if they have weapons, but Dorian repeats that they're just heading to college. Lasky repeats his question, so Nina says no. He then asks Dorian why he pulled him over, to which Dorian answers that he was driving too fast. Lasky lets this go since he admitted it, but he also points out that Dorian was driving while using a handheld device. Nina apologizes for it, but Lasky notices that the camcorder is still recording. He demands she turn it off, but Dorian argues that they have the right to record in their car. Still, Lasky reaches for the device, so Nina panics and accidentally presses the rewind button. Nina wakes to Dorian still driving while holding the camcorder, but her confused look concerns him, so he puts the device away. Nina asks where the cop is, and Dorian claims there's no cop. Dazed, she tells him to pull over, so he does so. Nina heads out to get some air while checking on the camera. Lasky's car arrives, so Dorian asks for help. As he checks on his mother, Nina asks if they went backward in time again, but Dorian doesn't understand what she means. Lasky approaches them, so Dorian tells him that he needs to take his mother to the hospital. However, Lasky points out that he parked his car with a portion of it on the highway, which is a violation. He insists that he will help after Dorian has corrected his mistake. Dorian argues that his mother's condition should be prioritized, so the officer takes out his taser. Panicked, Nina pushes the rewind button again, and time reverses all the way to the diner. Nina looks around, gasping for breath. She notices that Lasky is eating at the bar nearby, so she tells Dorian to leave now. 
This time, she drives the car, but decides to take a different route, telling Dorian that it's another way to school that's a bit longer, but hopefully safer. Seeing his worried look, Nina apologizes for being a bit crazy. To alleviate her worries, Dorian agrees that it's been a crazy path, but he wants to do something good like she's done for him. He adds that he hopes to make films that'll inspire generations because his mother always made him feel like he could do anything. This brightens Nina's mood, but she still decides to find a motel and rest for the day. Dorian argues that they're close to the school, but she excuses that she's not feeling well enough to drive back alone. Since it's their last night together, she suggests eating junk food and hanging out. At the motel, they relax while watching the lottery. Coming up with an idea, Nina powers on the camcorder, recording the lottery numbers. She notes that they used to think the lottery was the added tax for people foolish enough to try and guess the numbers. Dorian argues that the numbers aren't random because everything happens as it's meant to be. Nina thinks it's a depressing thought, but Dorian thinks it's cool that things happen the way they should. Nina then rewinds the camcorder to the start of the lottery. She then bets Dorian that if she can guess the lottery numbers, he has to promise to visit her whenever possible. Thinking that it's impossible, Dorian accepts. Nina then starts guessing the numbers correctly, surprising her son. Impressed, he bombards her with questions then hugs her. Laughing, Nina asks him to get some snacks, so he happily does, joking that they'll be rich. The mood dampens when Dorian announces that someone's at the door. Nervous, Nina goes to the door and finds Lasky there. He asks for IDs, so Nina goes to get hers, but Dorian questions why they need to do so. Lasky answers because he asked them to, and Dorian argues that it's not enough of an excuse. Hoping to get it over with, Nina tells Lasky that Dorian has his ID in his back pocket, but Dorian continues arguing because they haven't done anything. Finally, Lasky claims that they received a noise complaint, and Dorian jokes that he should be calling to complain about Lasky's excuses. Nina moves to rewind the camcorder to stop the situation, but Lasky catches her and interrogates her about the device. Dorian accuses him of being scared of getting recorded, so Lasky pushes him. Dorian crashes onto a framed picture, breaking the glass while Lasky holds him down. Immediately, Nina pushes on the rewind button and wakes up back in the diner. She curses, tired of getting their trip ruined by the officer. Taking a chance, Nina approaches Lasky while he's finishing up his lunch. She introduces herself and her son, then offers to buy him an apple pie as thanks for his services. Lasky gets suspicious but accepts nonetheless. The two sit down at the bar as Mabel serves their pies. Casually, Nina shares that they're passing through on the way to her son's college. She adds that her son is all she has, and Lasky agrees that family is the most important thing. Adding to the conversation, Nina mentions that her family lives nearby but she hasn't visited much. Her brother thinks she got too fancy for the life there, but she thinks life just takes them elsewhere. Again, she stresses that her son is important to her. Lasky looks to Dorian, who's watching them with concern, then just compliments her son. Nina then asks about Lasky's wife, noting that he's wearing a wedding ring. Lasky gets uncomfortable and explains that life goes places they don't expect them to. Nina offers her sympathy, and Lasky thanks her for the pie. He then gets up to leave, so Nina smiles, thinking that she has appeased the officer. However, as she's walking back to her son, Lasky calls out to her, asking if she owns the Volvo outside. He asks how she got such a nice car, so Nina explains that she worked hard for it and to get her son through college. Lasky takes this quietly, then advises her to drive safely before leaving. As the mother and son walk back to their car later, Lasky calls out to her again, demanding to present proof of her ownership of the car. Nina questions if people keep their pink slips in their car, and Lasky just says he hopes she does. Otherwise, she's not driving the car away. Nina gets agitated, demanding why he'd question if the car is hers. Noticing the camcorder in her hand, Lasky demands she put it down, but Dorian assures him that it's just a camera. Still, Lasky puts a hand on his holster, so Dorian hurries into the car, telling his mother that he has a picture of the pink slip in his phone. However, Nina rambles on, insisting that the car is hers so she'll drive it out of the parking lot. Finally, Dorian gets his phone and announces it, hoping to defuse the situation. Instead, Lasky pulls his gun out and shoots him in the chest. In her shock, Nina imagines the future where she watches her son play with his children in the park. Nina holds on to this image as she waits at the hospital in tears. Soon, a doctor approaches her, mournfully asking her to identify her son. Instead, she asks him for the camcorder, stressing that she needs it. After returning the camcorder to her, the doctor takes Nina inside the morgue, where she sees her son's dead body on the table. Praying for another chance to make things right, Nina presses the rewind button again, and time rewinds. Nina wakes up in the diner, 
crying tears of joy as she sees her son is alive. Noticing that Lasky isn't at the bar yet, she hurries her son to get back on the road. However, they come upon Lasky as he's entering the diner. Despite seeing Nina's shocked face, Lasky holds the door for them. During the drive, Nina bursts into tears. Thinking that she's getting emotional about him moving to college, he assures her that he'll visit on Thanksgiving. Deciding to do things differently, Nina asks for her son's help. Soon, the two pull over so Nina can explain the truth to him about the camcorder. She understands that he doubts her, but she begs him to help her end it. Considering her story, Dorian notes that there's only one path that they haven't taken that might take them to school. He then shows her that he reprogrammed the navigation app to her family's home, and Nina agrees to take it. They head to Nina's childhood home, and Dorian asks why she never returned. She recounts how her older brothers and uncle died there. She believed there were only two ways out of the town, leaving and never looking back, or dying. Hearing them, Dorian's uncle, Neil, steps out and greets his nephew. He tells Dorian that he has some things for Dorian, including a mid-conditioned Black Panther comic book. Excited, Dorian heads to the garage, allowing the siblings to talk. Neil notes that their father would have been glad to see her return, yet she didn't even visit during his funeral. The two then head inside the house, and Neil shares that his daughters are with their mother out of town. He claims that he's used to people leaving him, though he didn't expect Nina to return. He asks if she wanted him to see Dorian since his school is nearby, but Nina admits that she needs help. She shows him the camcorder, telling him that it's magic. Neil recognizes that it's their father's, and Nina adds that it lets her rewind time. However, Lasky keeps bothering them no matter what she does, always on the verge of killing her son. Surprisingly, Neil believes her, so Nina hugs her brother. Later, Neil notes that people who hate them always come, but now, Nina and Dorian aren't alone. He recounts that before he died, their father was convinced that he knew where Nina was all the time. Given this in the camcorder, Neil is convinced that the things their ancestors supposedly brought over from the motherland are true. He shows them his project, where he's documenting old files and interviewing people who've lived in the place for much longer. Because of this, he has a map that shows a lesser known path to the school. Neil guides the mother and son through alleyways and a drainage system, keeping their heads down until they finally reach the college grounds. With hands joined, Nina and Dorian head to the building, only to be stopped again by Lasky. They try to ignore him, but Lasky pulls out his gun, so Neil blocks him, guarding his family. The situation catches everyone's attention. Lasky insists on deciding how things are supposed to go, but Nina stands her ground defiantly. She stresses that her son has done nothing, but more police cars arrive, holding the people at gunpoint. Nina then raises her camcorder, and more civilians take out their phones to record the events. Dorian tells his mother to rewind the events and start over again, but she refuses to. Noticing how dozens of people are recording the scene, Lasky smiles, ridiculing Nina for trying to intimidate him with a camcorder. However, she stresses that he's crossed the line by misusing his authority and profiling them. The other officers start to reconsider, but Lasky still pushes for his way. That is, however, until the civilians begin moving forward while his comrades back away into their cars. With him alone, Nina comments that Lasky is the one who's truly afraid. Unable to argue further, Lasky puts his gun into his holster. Finally, Dorian enters the school grounds, and Lasky returns to his car, defeated. Ten years later, Nina uses the same camcorder to record Dorian playing with his daughter, Trinity. Concerned, he suggests not using the camera anymore, but Nina refuses. She puts the camera down and reminds him why she still uses it, but Dorian argues that it's been a decade since she needed it. Trinity then takes the camera, and Dorian gives his mother a look as if assuring her that everything is alright. However, the girl drops the camera, breaking it. Frightened, Nina tries her best to fix it, but Dorian stops her, urging her to let it go. Reluctantly, she agrees. Knowing that she's only worried, Dorian tells her he loves her, which Nina reciprocates. Dorian then offers to buy Trinity an ice cream, so he grabs his coat. Nina watches her son leave with a smile, but her smile soon melts into worry, afraid of the uncertain future and the evil things that magic simply can't fix permanently. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.